Recently picked up this Italian Surplus 92S. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you've seen this a couple of times. It's been a great little gun. I decided I want to do a couple small upgrades to it. So I made a couple of orders. They've all come in and we're going to get this thing upgraded today. First thing I'm going to do is replace a couple of springs in here. I picked up some Wolf Springs. This is a Wolf Trigger Spring. I also picked up a new hammer spring for it. This is a 17 pound. I haven't verified, but I believe the factory spring in there is a 20 pound. I've heard great things about these springs, so we're going to put them in, try it out, see what we think. This thing does have a uh, pretty nice trigger, but that uh, that initial pull, that's a uh, so what I've heard referred to as a combat trigger, and the new spring should be more of a range trigger. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but um, should be a good upgrade. The double action pull is pretty heavy. The single action, not bad at all. I also ordered some new grip screws. There's a couple of these are slightly boogered up. I'm no electrician, but I know that on a light switch, the screw head should be pointing straight up and down. And so to see these grip screws, four large grip screws pointing all different directions, just starts messing with me a little bit. So I went on ahead and ordered some hex head screws. The grips, these plastic grips that come on it, have a little bit of wear on them. A little bit of scratch and this 92s is completely slick in the front and the back and when you grip it the texture here has a pretty good grip to it but this hand doesn't grab much of it this one does but the uh, where the finger up here and the thumb sits is very smooth it's not horrible but it's not great so I went online looking at various grip options and I kept finding reviews for a company named Lock Grips. It's L-O-K. Here's the card that came with the grips I ordered. Now Lock Grips offers a number of uh, grips for several different firearms. You can see some of those listed here. In quite a few different colors and designs, he's got some great uh, Punisher inlay grips and a bunch of different colors as well. Um, so I emailed Jason up there he was a great guy to deal with and asked him if he could do a special grip for me and here's what he came up with I asked him for the uh, the blue and black G10 grips with the Air Force symbol in it these came out great and I'm excited to see him on the gun he uh, he cut these special for the 92s as well it's got the cutout at the heel and the uh, the opposite side on the inside for that mag release now when I first showed this gun, Preacher's Day Off uh, commented that the last time he'd shot a bread in 92 like this was when he got out of the Air Force in 99. Now he and I were in the Air Force at about the same time. The Air Force is also what exposed me to the bread in 92 in, in the form of an M9. And so I thought if I'm going to get a custom grip for this, I might as well get it with the Air Force symbol on it. And Jason over at Lock Grips did a great job with these. So now it's time to tear this down and get the springs replaced. On these 92S's, to get the hammer spring out, just like a regular 92, you have to take this lanyard loop off. But on the 92S, you also have to take this uh, mag release off. And the first thing to do that is just a tiny little roll pin. I don't know if I'm getting that on camera or not. But there's a tiny little roll pin right there that needs to be driven out.
there it goes. Now there's a spring here, so before you pull that punch out, put your finger over the top. That was a 1 16th punch. And now you need to drive out this roll pin here, holds the lanyard loop in. You're going to use a 1 8 punch. The 1 8 punch was working, but it was kind of tight, so I went down to a 3 30 seconds to finish. There's the lanyard loop. Now that, that pin has come out, and there's the spring we're going to replace. There's a little Italian police pocket fuzz right there. So this is this, the original spring, this is the new wolf spring I'm putting in. There's a little hammer spring guide down in there, a little rod that that spring goes over, so make sure it's going over that. And then we can put this part back together. I put this magazine catch back in here to help hold this lanyard loop in place until I get the roll pin back in. You can see that it's almost there. It needs to be compressed just a little bit further for that roll pin to go in. All right, now I've cut the head off of one end of the Q-tip and jammed it between this mag catch. Push this in, put the Q-tip in there, and it has lined it up to just the perfect place there. All right, you didn't need to see me banging on that with a mallet, but I've driven that roll pin down so it's below flush on both sides. And now I've got to put this back in so I can line that hole up with that hole and put that little pin back through. And that little pin is tiny. That went back in fairly easy. Perfect. I'm curious how much difference that's made already. Let's see. That is not a world of difference, but it is noticeable. All right, let's get the other spring changed. Take that little spring out, pops right out. And what we're going to change out, what we're changing out now is this little spring down right in here. It's the trigger return spring. Now to take that spring all the way out, we need to drive this pin through that holds the trigger in place. That pin goes through the middle of that spring. That pin won't come out because the tip of this spring is in the way. So we've got to take the slide stop off. Should be able to push this pin right through. Oh yeah. And the old spring came flying out of there. 
That's the spring we're getting rid of. We're going to replace it with a completely different style spring. Trigger can lift up out of there now. This pin back in. Oh, that went back in easy. Got spring tension. This goes in this way. Get this spring bit put back in. Now that it's captured in there, we can push that down and into place. Do a bit of a function check. Everything seems to be functioning. So now let's put the new grips and the new grip screws on. Now the old screws did not have any sort of washer underneath them. The Beretta Allen head screws uh, came with a locked tooth washer in the bag and locked grips sent me some rubber o-rings to uh, put under the screws. Now I think for now I'm going to try this without any sort of washer and see how that does. Now you gotta be careful with any new grip screw. Make sure that it doesn't extend into the magazine well and hang up the magazines. After I put all four grip screws in, I function checked at one of the magazines and you can see this line here where the end of one of the screws was just starting to rub on it. It wasn't binding up but you can see the mark on there. That was this screw here. You can see the hole right there where the, the just the very tip of the screw was just sticking through. So I I did put one of those rubber washers under just that one screw and it brings it up just a hair but it's not uncomfortable my hand doesn't even sit there anyway so that's just fine and I gotta tell you those G10 grips are uh, they aren't sticky they aren't slick it's just it's the first time I've touched this material I gotta tell you it feels really good and I got and Jason. If you're watching this, man, these things are uh, these things are perfect. Thank you very much. Those are those are worth every penny. I appreciate it, man. So yeah, for whatever firearm you're looking for, uh, if it's a panel type grip like this, take a look at Lock Grips. There's their website. Well, there it is. It's an Air Force Breda 92. Even though it's an S, it's not an M9. But the Memorial Day is just around the corner, and let, let's never forget that there are many people from our service that have given their lives to protect our and ensure our freedoms, carrying a Beretta 92 and many other firearms.
I am happy with that. And there's no way to uh, really convey this through a video, the difference that that spring makes. It was minor, but it was a good one. And now I need to get out of the range and make sure it's still 100% uh, reliable and have a bunch of fun with it. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Thanks for watching, and God bless. Oh, sorry, not quite done. As soon as I finished the video, I was taking a closer look at this, and I noticed this trigger return spring is not quite right. A lot of times it'll return all the way. But you can see if I let it out slow, it's not quite there. And the problem with that is, if it comes out and it's not all the way, pull the trigger nothing happens. I went back and looked at the spring and this uh, trigger conversion unit is a reduced power and I went back and looked online and they have a regular power and I think an increased power. I think the regular power would probably work just fine but this reduced power in this 92S is just not working for me. So for now I'm going to put the uh, original trigger spring back in and I don't know what I'll do with the, the other if I'll exchange it or just sell it and get rid of it or, or what I'll do but uh, for now I'm going to go ahead and put this one back in Old springs back in, trigger returns all the way, every time. Alright, now we're done.